Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we have a late night insight video. So it's going to be a quick hit video uh, on a fragrance that I have to thank my good friend uh, Paolo. He um, very kindly sent me a couple drops of what can only be considered in the luxury fragrance sphere, if you will. And it's from the House of Spirit of Dubai, which if you guys don't know, they actually have uh, what I think is still basically the, the record holder for the most expensive perfume. They had a $1.295 million bottle of fragrance. Well, it's not just the, the fragrance itself. You're actually paying for a pedestal, a suitcase cabinet, and a jewelry attachment that goes through it. If you want to... Um, if you want to uh, chuckle or laugh, you get three liters of this uh, fragrance, by the way. Go look up uh, Spirit of Dubai $1.295 million fragrance and you'll see the, uh, the packaging, uh, the leather outside around the suitcase that it comes with is unbelievable. But uh, anyways, when I win the lottery, I'm going to buy that. We'll do a, we'll a $1.295 million unboxing. But today, it's going to be a fragrance that is significantly less expensive yet still unbelievably expensive for the fragrance market and it's a fragrance called Boz. So there's not many fragrances that fall into the price category of Boz. You basically have fragrances from houses like Roja Dove, you have fragrances from houses like uh, Spirit of Dubai. There's really not many other houses that fall into a category of something kissing a thousand dollars. Now I'm not sure if Spirit of Dubai went through some sort of a price drop Interestingly enough, because I could have sworn there's actually still a bottle on eBay right now. If you go look up Spirit of Dubai Boz, there's a bottle on eBay for $1,200 or something. And on Spirit of Dubai website, it's $895 US for 90 mil. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on with the pricing. Roja recently did a price drop on a couple of his fragrances. Um... You know, Shepra Extraordinaire was 1,750 pounds, and they dropped it to 750 pounds. Ditto for one of my favorite Rojas, which is Great Britain. Uh, the Russian Leather, that was 1,750 pounds. They just willy-nilly knocked off 1,000 a, a pounds. So I'm not sure if they're being discontinued. And it's interesting that Spirit of Dubai sort of followed suit, if that is actually what happened. But Boz shows as 895 USD. So um, I could have sworn it was more expensive. That's why I mentioned that. Still extremely expensive for 90 mils, no matter how you slice it. Uh, and so Boz for me is a study in contrast. And we'll talk a little, I'll read you the insane note listing just because that'll probably take up most of the 20 minute video. Um, but uh, what, what they say about Boz, so first of all, one thing that I learned before we get into Boz itself is that every single second generation fragrance is actually somehow a continuation of the first generation fragrance. I never knew that. So for Boz, it's actually a continuation of this, which I have a review of if you're interested in checking it out. This is a fragrance from the first generation set, which was very kindly sent to me by one of my fra fragrance god people um, who wants to remain anonymous. But I have reviews of the entire first generation on the channel on Spirit of Dubai if you want to check it out. The packaging on Spirit Dubai on, on the Spirit of Dubai is second to none. I'll tell you that. I mean, one thing about these bottles is the packaging is outrageously good. Um, they spent a lot of money, and that worries me because you're wonder what, what are you paying for? Are you paying for the juice or are you paying for the packaging, right? Uh, and so a lot of your money is obviously going to the packaging. The packaging is ornate extraordinary detail on the packaging. Not that I care about the packaging, but it is beautiful. Um, I mean, look at this sample. This is a sample from the first generation. If you've never seen some of these, this is a literally a scroll. So you open it up and the fragrance comes out like so, right? And then this actually comes off and this is a scroll and it tells you about the fragrance. This is from the first generation, and this is a fragrance called Rimal, and Rimal is actually the predecessor to Boz. So Boz is the continuation of Rimal, and Rimal is um, warm notes of saffron, cinnamon, incense, leather, labdanum, and agar wood overwhelm you, and the floral notes of rosemary, lang lang encircle you. So I liked Rimal, but I didn't love it. 
I love Boz. Boz is uh, fantastic. It is uh, probably one of the best Spirit of Dubai's that I've smelled, my opinion. Um, however, let, let's read the blurb and then we'll sort of get into the howevers here in a little bit. Um, so here's what they say about the fragrance. Perched high above the clouds, Boz, and by the way, Boz is a falcon. So um, um, the, the animal that Boz is representative of is the falcon. Depicted for, depicted for posterity in his bronze-hued glory, the falcon is the ruler of the skies. Taking a journey with Boz, you close your eyes and take a deep breath. You're, you're, you are filled with the smell of falcon leather and the woody scent of smoked olibanum, vetiver, labdanum, and Indian agarwood oil. Okay, so um, I have had the... Uh, good luck of, uh, he gave me enough juice to where I was able to wear this to bed once before today as well. So it was not just today. Um, I had, I've had a chance to wear it to bed once before. And so, but still, I, it's not like I've owned an entire bottle, right? Uh, I've not, I've not gone through an entire bottle or anything like that. Um, these are just first impressions. So take them with a grain of salt. Okay. Uh, but, um, the, Symbol of the falcon, by the way, the reason that it is uh, um, used as a as a uh, as an emblem in this perfume is that the falcon in the Arabic culture is supposed to symbol symbolize freedom with flight, courage, strength, royalty, and prestige. So falcon um, hunting and falcon shows are actually still a big part in some Middle Eastern culture. Falconry is a big part of Middle Eastern culture in some parts of the Middle East still. And um, so interestingly enough, when you go to the note listing, and let's just get that out of the way. Let me let me read you the old note listing so you can just, um, you can appreciate just how complex of a fragrance spirit of Dubai says this is. Now, I will tell you right off the bat that I don't get a lot of these notes, okay? So it's almost like Roja Dove sometimes where they list a ton of notes and sometimes you get a couple and sometimes you don't. But we'll talk about that as well. So here's what Spirit of Dubai's official website says the notes are. Top note of falcon leather, which I have no clue how you make a falcon leather accord. But I, I would love to hear how they did that one day. Um, cardamom, coffee, saffron, coriander, black pepper, aldehydes, bergamot, plum, red berries, star anise, cinnamon, nutmeg, pepper, clove, and mint. That's the top. The middle notes are orchid, carnation, lily of the valley, jasmine, rose, incense, leather, birch leaves, honey, floral, tuberose, ylang, -ylang geranium, tobacco, and smoked olibanum. That's the middle. The base is guyacwood, sandalwood, cystus, tonka, guarjum balsam, copiba balsam, myrrh, patchouli, peru balsam, civet, costus, vetiver, praline, amber, vanilla, musk, castorium, labdanum, Indian agarwood, or oil, and it's characterized as an oriental spicy woody. Okay, so uh, actually, if you know Rimal, and now that I know that it's a continuation of it, I see the continuation. I, I, I think Boz is by far the superior scent, but I do see the continuation um, from, from Ramal. And it basically opens up, um, first sniff, you, you'll realize you're smelling something beautiful. Just, it's, it's a beautiful fragrance. And if you go to Fragrantica, uh, what, one of the things that is interesting to me is many of the fragrances that I like, uh, you know, uh, is challenging and it's tough to wear and that kind of thing. And if you go to Fragrantica, there are people who are kind of put off by it. Everyone loves Boz on Fragrantica, which kind of gives me pause. Kind of gives me pause actually, because I usually don't like stuff that everyone else likes. Um, but all of the comments on Fragrantica are just amazing, gushing with uh, adoration about Boz. And, uh, but it does. I mean, when you first spray, you're going to realize that you're smelling something amazing. It opens up with this very uh, oily, almost animalic, um, very unique to the first generation, though. That's the thing. So even though uh, I've said before that, um, you know, many of the Spirit of Dubai fragrances that I've smelled have a very similar DNA to them. If you go watch my first generation reviews, you'll, you'll hear me say that. Um, with a couple of them, they have this similarity throughout them. Like they're using 
sort of like Roja's um, Middle Eastern line of scents, where he has done UAE, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, um, you know, uh, Sultanate of Oman, that kind of thing, right? Qatar. Um, many of those scents, if you smell a lot of them back to back to back, and you have and you have some experience in fragrance, you will pick up sort of the similarities, if you will, in in the Roja line, right? And that's kind of the way I feel with the Spirit of Dubai fragrances as well. This one stands out a little bit. It, it does have that Spirit of Dubai DNA, but I feel like it sort of goes its own direction enough to stand on its own two feet, which makes it very interesting to me. And um, so the first thing you, that you um, that you're going to um, that you're going to to smell is sort of this oily uh, oud, slightly animalic. Okay. And you will notice a big jump in quality from the first generation to me for um, from D1 to Boz. I think there's sort of a little bit of a leap. They have done some improvements. And, and if you um, if you go back to some of my first generation videos, you'll notice that when I when I started to sort of dip into these scents for the very first time, I started with the Oud and I started with the Oud because I wanted to know what Oud type of oud I was going to be smelling throughout the rest of the line, but I think they pulled a little bit of a fast one because I think the quality of the oud itself in, in the fragrance that is literally just titled oud by Spirit of Dubai uh, is different from the rest of the oud fragrances. It seemed like there was a little bit of a drop off in some of them and there was a drop off in price too, so it made sense. This was I think the most expensive or one of the most expensive from the first collection. Um, and so I was curious to see once we got to the second collection and the price point moved up again, how the level, how the level of Oud was going to be. And, um, it, so, um, obviously I don't think it's fair to compare any of these houses, even these ultra luxury houses, um, to the artisanal niche houses that I've fallen in love with, like Bortnikoff, Arige Ladore. And you know, Ensar and stuff like that. You just can't. They're on. They're they're over here, and and the artisanal houses are over here. They play in two completely different sandboxes. So I don't think it's fair to really do a comparison. But price wise, they are playing in the same sandbox. This is all. This is as much as uh, some expensive Arige La Dore, um, Ensar, Bortnikoff fragrances. So. And the price side of things, I think it is fair to compare. And while I do feel like you're getting a relatively high quality oud, they say Indian agarwood oil here. I have no clue. Um, you know, I have no clue anything else beyond that. Uh, Spirit of Dubai doesn't really tell you what percentage of the of the um, you know makeup is oud or anything like that. I don't know. I don't know. It does feel like they're using real oud. How much? I have no clue. Um, but you know, it, it does start off a little higher quality than what I got in the blends themselves from the first collection. I'll tell you that. That's the first thing that I noticed. And there's this jump in, in quality and complexity from the first generation. And um, I did a review on a fragrance called D1. And D1 is a second generation fragrance as well. And everyone else was talking about this jump in quality from the first generation to the second. I didn't get it in D1. I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good fragrance, but uh, I thought it was extremely overpriced and I didn't get much of a big jump in quality. In fact, it reminded me of a first of, of first generation fragrances. They could have stuck that in the first generation. I never would have even batted an eye. Um, so Boz, I've been very excited to try because this is the one that I have heard such good things about. Uh, and I was um, I was extremely excited to give this one a try. Uh, and instantly it, it stole my heart. I mean, from the very first spray, you know, you get this, um, mixture of that oily, but slightly barnyardy oud. And the thing that got me in the opening is the castorium. Okay. So instantly what you smell, what blend, what is almost like a blend of this oud and this castorium blending together. And I love castorium. Castorium was one of my favorite notes. It gives it that's probably in the opening when they say falcon leather. That's probably what they did. They just used a castorium accord with other, you know, materials to create that leather-like bit in the opening. And you will get it. You'll get it with a little bit of this oily oud, which I actually really enjoy. 
and um, it's slightly barnyard, but not too much, okay? So if you're somebody who doesn't really like extremely challenging barnyard oud fragrances, still give this one a try because um, it's just, there's there's a million other oriental notes sort of coming in and softening it a little bit. I mentioned saffron and coffee and anise and plum and berries and, you know, there's mint and there's all kind of stuff in here. And I almost feel like, uh, you smell maybe what your nose allows you to smell and then, you know, I'm smelling different things this time than when I first wore it and I'll talk a little bit about that too, but I think Boz is probably one of the most complex fragrances I've smelled from the house and they have some complex fragrances even in the first generation. This is um, right up there with some of the most complex fragrances from the house and, um, you know, one one thing that uh, is is kind of blended with that oily oud and that leathery castorium is this very dry rose saffron combo that is just absolutely dripping in resins. Okay, so now we're talking about oud, rose, and saffron, which is a combination that's been done one million and one times. There is absolutely nothing new about an oud, rose, saffron. And actually, if you um, you know, it, it, so when you smell, uh, a spirit of Dubai fragrance, you expect sort of the heavy Middle Eastern style. That's expected. That's what they're known for. Um, and Boz hits the ball square out of the park with the Middle Eastern style. Um, and, you know, for a late night insight video, it's hard for me to go into much more detail, um, because it's still sort of a new experience for me. But what I will say is that the 30,000 foot overview, if you sort of forced me to give you a description of the scent just as a high level overview, I would say it's a rose oud saffron fragrance with fruity nuances with sort of these, um, you know, um, these, these fruity nuances in the background. Okay, that's just a quick high level overview. That's the first sort of pass. Rose oud saffron combo with, with fruitiness. Um, but if you listen to the note listing, you know that there's a lot more going on, right? So I was speaking with my buddy Jonathan from Jonathan1970. He's been on the channel. He's a good friend. And he actually owns a bottle of Boz. And he has much more experience with it than me. And he was telling me basically sort of the same thing that I was thinking. Um, but but um, what amazes him is that he gets something different from it every time as well. He was saying that sometimes the spices flow through stronger. And when I smell the spices here, it um, it's basically this very peppery. Um, so you get pepper, you get uh, nutmeg, very heavy cardamom. So think about cardamom in like a traditional Middle Eastern style coffee, okay? So if you've ever smelled, um, if you've ever drank Middle Eastern coffee, comes in these very small cups and it's a very strong coffee and they usually will have some sort of cardamom flavoring to it. Um, and so think of cardamom in that Middle Eastern coffee because there is a coffee note here as well, though it's not as prominent as in Majalis to me, uh, but there is a coffee note here. It's maybe not even as prominent as in Tarath. Tarath felt like it was sort of here and Majalis coffee note felt like it was here, like it was amped up even more. This is even less than Tarath. So this is sort of, there is a coffee note here, but it's really, you know, I think part of the blend big time. It's not a prominent note to my nose. And um, so the florals start to come through as well. Once you get into the heart, there's, a, I mentioned some of the florals, there's orchid, there's carnation, lily of the valley, jasmine, rose, um, tuberose, ylang-ylang, geranium, so just a smattering of florals, and all of them are sort of honey-dipped, okay? So there's this honeyed aspect to the floral, the way that the, um, the florals are presented, uh, and with the florals, you'll notice even more of the spices, so that's when you'll kind of notice the star anise and the clove and stuff like that, and along with that honeyed floral aspect is sort of this berry um, fruit. So this um, this very um, almost decadent fruit, you know, almost, I was going to say the word rotten, and actually rotten may still be a good word to use for it because there is this 
um, you know, have you ever had like a plum that is so, uh, you know, it's, it's been sitting in your house for so long that it's not necessarily bad, but, um, you know, when you bite into it, it almost feels like the, um, the, the plum itself is, is, has been sitting for so long that the juices feel like it's starting to ferment. You know what I mean? Like it has that almost like it's 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 got a thicker and a heavier taste than just an average plum, right? Uh, because it's been sitting for so long. It has a very deep, dark texture, extremely sweet, right? Because uh, there is some sweetness in this fragrance. Normally, I don't like sweetness, but I do like what they've done here. And so, imagine this very decadent, um, sort of decaying fruit vibe with berries and plum and a touch of mint, just a very small smattering of mint with those honeyed uh, florals. And, and you know what's funny is um, the honeyed aspect of the florals almost gives it this vintage 80s feel because that was such a popular thing to do in the 80s, especially in women's fragrances. Yesterday, I wore Van Cleef & Arpels Gem for women. Uh, that was my scent of the day. I wore it to work. And it was fantastic. And there is a little bit of this honeyed aspect to it. Um, you know, or if you think of something like uh, Poison by Dior from the 80s, there's this honeyed facet to the tuberose. And that's sort of how the florals come across here. But what's interesting is, even though there is this vintage 80s vibe due to the honeyed aspect of the florals, uh, the synthetics that Spirit of Dubai is using make this feel very modern, okay? So um, it feels vintage in vibe in maybe uh, the way that they blended the, not necessarily the blend, but the way that they um, put the ingredients next to each other feels very vintage in feel. However, the execution is very modern because of everything that they wrapped it in. You know, uh, if you ever heard Roja talk about his extremely high-end scent that he charges 3500 bucks for, he says it's like a Sheepra wrapped in cashmere. This feels like a vintage scent wrapped in Spirit of Dubai modern synthetics. And there's no doubt about it. This is probably choked full of synthetics. They're, they're quick to highlight their um, ingredients that are um, natural, obviously. Sorry, my computer locked on me. Let me get back in. Um, okay, yeah, so they're quick to highlight the ingredients that are natural. Uh, and, and the rare and exquisite essences in each bottle. But obviously, this is choked full of synthetics to have a smell like this. That's my, that's my guess. Um, the other thing that you will notice is that uh, along with those florals, you will start to pick up this um, birchy, almost um, smoky. So imagine this and, and, and you know what's interesting is even before I realized that Boz was a continuation of Ramal, and, and in Ramal, by the way, let me read you the little blurb of, of Ramal, because I think it also goes with Boz. But imagine a falcon flying over this landscape that they mention in Ramal. So here, here was the little blurb in Ramal. So for Ramal, they say... If I can get this scroll open. Okay, so in Ramal, they say that we treaded the soft desert sand, our feet sinking into its warmth and softness as the wind lifted up our spirits. Over here, the air itself seemed to shimmer. At the touch, the magic dust, the sands of the dunes. It sparkled, but the veil of shimmer was kind. Letting escape the breeze that beckoned us. This is Dubai Rimal, she explained. But I said nothing as I succumbed to the magic. There's a, there's a certain magic that prevails in the dunes. You can sense it in the air. The warm notes of saffron, cinnamon incense, leather, labdanum, and agarwood overwhelm you. And the floral notes of rose and ylang-ylang entice you. So, look at the coloring too, by the way. Um, so, the color almost looks like this sand-like color, right? This desert color. Um, and I think that's uh, interesting because when I was talking about Boz 
Uh, I had mentioned that um, there is this smoky, almost sand-like dryness to the way that the incense comes across to my nose. And that was before I realized that uh, there is a continuation between the scents. Um, and, and so um, the, the dryness, so imagine a falcon kind of flying over that, that, um, that image that they tried to paint there of the dunes in the desert, right? Imagine a, a falcon sort of flying over that. That's a great image for Boz because there is this, um, uh, there is this, uh, dry sand, smoky, incensey. Um, you know, if you've ever been to the desert, the desert air has this sort of feel to it. And it's this, um, it's, it's, it's this complete lack of any moisture. It just has this extreme dryness to it. And it's almost like you can feel the sand on your skin. Even if it, the wind's not blowing, you can just feel the sand on your skin, right? And there's a little bit of this, um... Uh, to me, this is a very masculine scent because just the way that it comes together, that castorium leathery bit, uh, mixed with, there's also tobacco in here. So I just imagine almost like a group of men riding through the desert, the falcons flying overhead. That's the image, um, this, and maybe they're up to no good. Maybe the, maybe the rotten, rottenness isn't just from the fruit. Maybe it's also from like the sinfulness of the men. They're going to actually do something decadent, right? Or, or you know, use your imagination. Uh, that's the feel, right? And so it has a vintage vibe because many of the vintage fragrances that I love from the past, they use animalics and they use, um, you know, these these sort of uh, challenging notes to, to uh, portray things in the scent. And modern perfumery has sort of gone away from that. And it's here in Boz. Well, this is Ramal, but it's it's here in Boz. So you get the civet, you get the costas, you get the castorium, you get all of these resins. And um, it, it blends together to give a very traditional Middle Eastern, like this is the smell of what I would imagine the Dubai Mall smells like. I've never been to Dubai, but I imagine if I walked into the Dubai Mall, this is what I would smell. This is the smell of the Middle East as I imagine it today. Um, and so, pros and cons. So, number one pro for me is I could, if if I found a bottle of this for, you know, four hundred bucks or something, I'd be I'd be all over it. This would be this would be a great buy for me um, at a at a respectable price. But the downside is, is that uh, my favorite part of the fragrance is the first hour and a half or so. Because after a couple hours to me, it doesn't necessarily turn into a bad scent, but it loses all of the things that I just described. It loses the fruits. It loses the leather. Um, it loses the spices and the honeyed aspect of the florals. It loses all of that. And all you're sort of left with, at least on my skin, and, I, and I've only tried this twice, so to be fair, do not take my word as gospel on this, but um, all you're sort of left with is the heavier vetiver, musky sort of um, patchouli woods. That's it. Um, the oud seems to disappear, which really bothers me because normally oud is a very uh, heavy, base heavy material. And, you know, when, when high quality real oud is used, it's usually one of the last materials to stay on your skin. And it's, the oud note literally is gone to my nose within 30 minutes, right? And, and the scent is sort of moved on. It's still a beautiful scent. And if money was no issue, I would buy this 90 mil bottle and I would literally reapply every couple hours. And I heard some people, I read some reviews where they said, oh, it lasts forever on clothes. Maybe that's true. Maybe it does last forever on clothes. But my skin just absolutely soaked this up. Like it felt like the dry down, like the stages of the dry down were on like two times speed. Like I was watching a YouTube video on two times speed and it was just fast forwarding through the scent. And um, I didn't like that. I, uh... 
for 600 or 800 and, and um, what is this? 800 and what did I say? 95, yeah, $895. I, um, I would expect this thing to last for, for absolutely forever. And I'm not somebody that complains about longevity and siage and anything like that. Um, you know, because for me, I have so much juice. I just reapply. It doesn't matter. Um, but there's something that bothers me about that for this type of money. Going back to the whole packaging debate at the very beginning of, of our little talk, I, I almost do feel like the money is going to the packaging and not the juice. And, and, and so even if I could get this sent for 400 bucks, which I know that's a steal, right? Even if I could get it for 400 bucks, I don't know if I would because there's still so many other fragrances from Russian Adam, from Marie Ladore, from uh, Bortnikov uh, that I want to hunt down that I, I don't know if I would even give Spirit of Dubai $400 for this. Would I love to have it? Yes. Would I spray away if I had it? You bet your bottom dollar. I would drench myself in this and then I'd reapply. Uh, because I love that opening. The opening is a five-star opening. But I hate to say it's an uninspired dry down, but it does sort of feel like an uninspired dry down for me. Um, it feels like they fell into the trap of a lot of scent houses nowadays, and that's really focusing on getting people to spray the card, smell, and go, oh my God, that's the most beautiful thing in the world, and buy it. And somebody that can just drop a G, I guess with taxes, it would be about a G. Uh, somebody that can just drop a G like that on a fragrance probably would be the person that would just go, yep, give it to me. Who cares? Doesn't matter. Um, and so, you know, I, I'm torn on the house. I own zero bottles of Spirit of Dubai. The only reason that I was able to, um, even do the videos I did is because of the generosity of one of you. And the only reason I've done the videos that I'd have on the second collection is because of Paolo. So, um, so yes, I am, uh, I'm a little torn on one hand. I really like it on another hand. Um, mostly what I'm learning I like is the first hour or two. Uh, let's say the first couple hours to be fair. Let's be, let's be generous instead of just saying an hour and a half. But man, it's good for it's good for an hour and a half. I'll tell you that it is. Uh, it's very. It leaves you wanting more. It leaves me wanting to just drain this decant. Just it's just so beautiful. Um, but uh, but yeah. So that's my that's sort of my uh, my take on Boz. Uh, I would love to smell the rest from the line. There is still uh, Dura, Amal, uh, Abjar, Nargesi, and Haiba. I've never smelled any of those yet. But, um, but yes, it's been a pleasure. I love doing these. I love, I love getting to test these high-end luxury fragrances, if you will. And uh, whether luxury is applying to the juice or the packaging, I guess, can depend on which side of the coin you come from. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, and, and, it, and it's very telling that I went through the entire sample set. I have, like I said, videos on the channel. You can go check them out. I went through the entire first generation sample set and now two from the second generation and I have plans on buying exactly zero. I think that's pretty telling. Um, I've always thought that what, it, what somebody who does these videos does with their own money is maybe the most telling thing about how they feel about a fragrance and the fact that none of these Spirit of Dubai is actually, even uh, knowing that Boz has this price drop, um, I think I would still try to buy Majalis over Boz. I think I like Majalis from the first generation just a little bit more. Um, that's, that's my take. That's, there's something about Majalis that sort of reminds me of, of Jordan. Um, and, and so I, uh, I would probably buy Majalis if I was pressed, but, uh, honestly, I'm not going to buy any. I don't think I'll probably end up buying any. And I would, like I said, I'd love to try Dura, Amal, Abjar, Nargesi, and Haiba. But my guess is even those probably won't make me pull out my wallet. Uh, but that's my take on Boz. If you guys have smelled this beautiful juice, and it is beautiful, to be fair, it is. Um, it just, I uh, wish some of the shortcomings were uh, fixed a little bit. But, um, but yes, if you guys have had experience smelling this, do leave a comment below and let me know what you think about Boz. Love to hear your thoughts. Um, 
I would uh, I try to respond to every single comment. So if you do leave me a message, I'll try to get back to you. Uh, and uh, I appreciate the support everyone's given me. To everyone who has sent me something, if you can see up here at the top, those are all sort of decants waiting to be discussed on the channel. So if you've sent me something, please be patient. If it takes a month or two or a year or two, I promise I will get to everything. Uh, today I got to Angelique sous la pluie and Baz, and so it's going to take a while to work my way through all of these decans, but it's thanks to the generosity of, of you guys of the community that I can even do this. It, it would be very cost prohibitive for me to go buy samples of everything. So, um, so yes, thank you very much to everyone who sent me something. It's, um, it's, it's my absolute pleasure to do these videos for you guys. Cheers, and I'll uh, catch you next time. Bye-bye.